American civil rights organizations used to care about, well, civil rights. That's not surprising. In fact, it's good. But recently, the NAACP has declared that it regards climate change as a civil rights issue and has said that Martin Luther King's vision for America cannot be achieved without, quote, environmental justice, whatever that is. We spoke to Black Belt Citizens organizer Portia Shepard about this shift. Here it is. Portia Shepard, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Tucker. So um, it's a little bit confusing for a couple reasons. The most obvious is I, I agree with both goals, a clean environment and racial equality, but it's hard to see exactly how they're tied together. How are they? Um, well, I personally cannot speak for the NAACP, but what I can speak for is the environmental injustice that we're having here mm -hmm. um, in the Black Belt of Alabama. And part of it is, you know, a as it relates to what Dr. King stood for, he stood for justice and stand up for injustices that are happening in all kinds of communities. When you're looking here right. in the great state of Alabama, when you're looking here in the great state of Alabama, um, it's not just in the Black Belt of Alabama. It just so happened that in Lawrence County and in Macon County, they're experiencing this same fight as as it relates to environmental injustices. It just so happened that in our community, majority of the individuals who are facing these problems are people of color. Okay, but I mean, by that standard, couldn't you say Martin Luther King fought for justice, and he did, and it's unjust for the government to take most of what you earn. I think we'd all agree they shouldn't take most of it. Oh, yeah. So Martin Luther King would be in favor of lower tax rates. But he didn't talk about lower tax rates, and he didn't talk about global warming, so maybe we shouldn't get him involved in those issues. But it, as it relates to justice and fighting injustice, I, I'm, I'm assuming, because I did not make those particular statements, but I'm assuming because through, through the legacy of what Dr. King stood for, that's the, the same message that we're using and the same, uh, the tools that we're using in this fight for environmental justice. When you have uh, time and time again, when you have the communities, especially in the Black Belt of Alabama, that don't have accurate sewage, you have communities that are being poisoned uh, right. by, by, by coal ash. So when you have these things, one would think that it must be a civil rights issue because a lot of the communities that are being affected by this, Tucker, are people of color. So mm -hmm. in that aspect of it, I can definitely understand that. Yeah, I mean, I sort of see what you're saying. I mean, there's no doubt that poorer people live in crummier places. They tend to live in places that are more polluted. There are a bunch of reasons for that, some of them obvious, some of them sinister, I agree. But I mean, the most polluted places on Earth, I don't know, Ukraine where the Chernobyl uh, disaster happened has no people of color, but has a lot of poor people. And so I guess the problem I have with this is yeah, if you poor. frame it as a racial issue, then it scares people and makes them think that there's a conspiracy to pollute just because of their skin color. And if we don't evidence that, have evidence that's true, we probably shouldn't suggest it, right? I, I agree to a certain extent, but as, as far as uh, the class uh, point that you made up, I absolutely agree with that. That's one of the reasons why I brought up Lawrence and Macon County. That's a predominantly white area, mm -hmm. but the medium income is it's similar to what's happening down there in Perry County, which is between ten dollars and $17,000 a year. So you have to say that this is definitely a, a point of class. And it's not so much that we just want to live in, uh, in, in a poor area. It's just that me personally, I can just speak for myself, I inherit land in that particular area. I'm not right. just going to give it up because is a poor area. And I think it's, it's, un, it's, it's unfair, especially for that particular community, where you have majority of the people who live there that own their land have to give it up because you have politicians and people who are in power who made decisions to dump this particular thing, these particular issues on them. And that's one of the fights that Black Belt Citizens is fighting. It's not so much, you know, of, oh, it's civil rights, oh, it's black power. No, it's, it's, it's not about that. It's about helping people stand up for themselves and get the justice that they deserve. People deserve clean water. My aunt has no business buying three to four uh, cases of water a, um, a, a week just so she can cook a meal because she's afraid to drink the water that is coming out of her, uh, of her faucet. Those things should not be happening. And it just so happened when you talk about civil rights issue and you see it in Lowndes County, you see it in, um, in, in G's Bend, you see it definitely in Uniontown, Alabama, yeah. that these issues are definitely taking place. And it just so happened in that area, it is people of color, but it's definitely a class issue. You. Well, I got to say, I kind of agree with a lot of what you're saying, and, and just I can't resist saying I hope you don't sell your land, because some of the prettiest places in this country oh, are poor not. places, are rural areas, a lot prettier <laughs> than downtown Los Angeles or Beverly Hills, I would say. But maybe <laughs> a lot, maybe a lot the, and a lot, a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, a lot safer, nicer people. Um, but maybe part of the problem is that the people in charge ignore and exploit rural America. Do you ever think of that? 
Oh, absolutely. You just hit the nail. I mean, it, it, and it goes back to that class statement that you made early. It goes right back to that. You know, even though I'm, I'm, I'm enduring the same stuff you're enduring, but because I got a little bit more than you, then I can, I can keep you, I can feel like I'm, a little, I'm above it. And that's the biggest issue of it all. And so that's what Dr. King was about. You know, that poor people campaign that he was getting ready to kick off before his assassination, you know, it was poor people. He didn't say poor black. He said poor people. And that's right. important to understand that when you see it time and time again, of environmental justice throughout this great nation. It is specifically in poor community, and more than likely, people of color will be affected by that. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I like rural Alabama. What? They're you nice agree? People. I can't well, believe I, it. You know, I basically <laughs> agree. And I appreciate your coming on tonight. Portia, thanks a lot for Thank that. Thank you so much, Tucker. Thank you so much for having us.